Hey guys, welcome back to Atomic Underground. My name is Nick. Today's episode is pretty basic. We're looking at different ways to cut steel out of the silo. We found that using the plasma cutter, while great at some things, is also a very slow process due to how much dirt is on uh, the steel inside the silo. What you can see here is the basic structure of our cableways. This is where all the I-beams we're going to be cutting out is. So you can see just how slow it is. He's just cutting a little corner there of an I-beam and it just takes forever. So what we're looking at is some of the uh, Diablo blades that we can buy commercially at Home Depot. So one of the first steps to scrapping the long cableway is to separate the left and right sides. I have a plan to take these out in about five to 700 pound chunks as opposed to breaking it up into small pieces. As you can see, there's really only one piece of I-beam that connects the two sides. There is some angle iron in an X pattern between the frames, but that's relatively easy. So what you can see right here is Colby using our battery powered uh, reciprocating saw. This has got a normal, uh, I believe it's called the torch blade on it. It works, but it's very slow. And obviously being battery powered, it's uh, efficiency is somewhat limited. But you can see the tight area we actually have to work with, which is uh, less than ideal. You can also see the cross bracing between them. My plan is to bring down the whole ceiling one section at a time and carry them out in chunks as opposed to disassembling it like So what we're going to try first here is using a reciprocating saw on a four inch I-beam. And what's, uh, it's hard to tell in the rust there, but that's a galvanized electrical channel on top there, which uh, does not come off and it will be covered in all the conduits of the silo. So we can't, we have to cut through it. So not bad, that took about 45 seconds to go through the I-beam. I uh, had no issues with it. As you can see, the uh, teeth are still fine. We're gonna do one more cut here just to verify. I'd seen other advertisements that the blades didn't get that hot. I believe that may be only the circular saw blade because I found that the uh, reciprocating blade definitely got hot. So as we move into the uh, second cut here, I was just testing to see uh, at, over time, like how much the uh, blade would lose its effectiveness.
Okay, so not so bad. It took just over a minute. I had to reposition the metal a little bit there. As remember, these cuts are uh, pretty optimal in a garage setting compared to how bad it's going to be holding this over your head inside of a missile silo. So this is a Milwaukee 6519 reciprocating saw. It's a 12 amp and inch and an eighth on a stroke. And we're pairing it with a Diablo 9-inch carbide teeth. Thick metal and uh, demolition blade. I found that this is a huge improvement over the torch blades we had been using. I'll have the price and uh, information on these blades in the description, but uh, I bought everything here at Home Depot. So now what we're going to try is the seven and a quarter inch steel demon from Diablo. This goes on a circular saw. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to pick up a worm drive uh, corded saw today. So what I was using is a $50 Ryobi uh, saw that we got from Home Depot. I'm well aware that this is the wrong saw for the job, but uh, we're gonna test it out anyway. And if we actually end up using this blade in the silo, we'll replace it with a much nicer worm drive saw. So what we're concerned about here is that the saw is not able to cut through even a four inch I-beam in a single pass. But what I'm gonna try here is cutting, actually in not really the optimal direction, but I'm gonna see if I can cut through the side of an I-beam and get through the webbing all in one pass. All right, so to me, that was very impressive. It was able to cut right through the uh, webbing of the I-beam. Now, the problem that you're gonna see me have here in a second is when you go to do the other side, obviously with a circular saw, it's pretty hard to line up a cut. So I think if we were to do this in the silo, we'd get one side cut like this and then use a reciprocating saw to get the other side which would only take a few seconds. Remember, every, everything we're doing in the silo is up over your head and uh, much more confined space than this. So this is definitely the wrong saw for the job, but I'm pretty happy with how the blade performed. It was quick, it does a nice clean cut, um, which will eliminate all the re-welding issues we had with uh, the plasma cutter. And as you see, I just finished it off in like five seconds with the uh, reciprocating blade. So as you can see, I was nearly there already. Just really hard to line up two sides of the cut. So I think what I've learned today is that this is faster than even uh, plasma cutting. So as we're plasma cutting the steel, it tends to re-weld in a bunch of spots. So I had uh, offered to sell pieces of our I-beam uh, as we get it out of the silo. So this is a uh, four inch I-beam from the silo probably uh, 
high pressure uh, pressure washer the pieces off uh, maybe clean them up a little more and we'll probably uh, once we get nice big pieces like this out I'll probably cut them up into seg segments on a uh, on a chop saw on a bench so it's nice clean cut for you that's what we're gonna be looking at in the future um, Diablo is not sponsoring this video I just saw other videos where they uh, did sponsor the people and I wanted to see how this stuff really works and I would say with the right saw uh, that they work very well um, of course, with the silo, what I'm worried about is even for those of you that are going to say that this is not a very sturdy setup here on the floor with me just sitting on top of each other, um, this is better than what we're going to have in the silo. So there's not one tool that we can use for everything. So having a combination of being able to use a circular saw for the easy to get stuff and then a reciprocating saw for the stuff that we can't get to is going to be really valuable. So anyway, I know I haven't seen you guys on Atomic Underground in a while. Um, we are still working out there. I'm saving up for something really big right now uh, that I hope you guys will enjoy, but it's going to be another few months before we get uh, any real big progress out there. And I'm uh, probably going to wait for the uh, temperatures to cool off a little bit before we start hauling uh, all this kind of stuff to the surface again. Anyway, as always, I'm Nick with Atomic Underground. You guys have a great day. You're not bleeding, you're not working, right?